be sure to go to flipsidegaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. It's a good deal and helps support the show. Also, today's video is sponsored by the like button. Please press it. It makes me feel good. <laughs> what is up, Planeswalkers? Theory 6 back with some more Ikoria spoilers, technically uh, C20 as well, but we'll get into those. Uh, today we're starting off with Mythic Spoiler as opposed to ending with Mythic Spoiler. Uh, and that's just because that's how I open the, the tabs. Shut up. <laughs> Lurus the Dream Den is a 1 Orzov Orzov 3-2 Cat Nightmare with Companion. Each permanent card in your starting deck has converted mana cost 2 or less. Lifelink. During each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost 2 or less from your graveyard. What's interesting, obviously, is that this has a lot of potential in a white weenie style deck, or even a, a white black weenie style deck, you know, we could have an Orzov sacrifice deck that could probably get away with just having nothing but two, two CMC things and less, um, and then you play this to just accrue extra value. Um, that said, I don't, I don't know how strong that is. Like that's, this feels like more of a deck building restriction than the hippo. Um, I mean, it, it is right. There are literally fewer cards that you can play. Um, that are CMC two or less as opposed to three or more. I'm pretty sure it was three or more, not above three. Um, but still, in terms of commander, what's interesting, obviously, is that if you have this as your commander, you you just have kind of like gravy. Like, if you just play a lot of permanents that are um, CMC two or less, you know, what's not to love? There are plenty of things that uh, you could even you could even have some weird Orzov like artifact deck where you can sacrifice a lot of low CMC artifacts that get you value. Um, so things I'm thinking of are like um, Mycosynth Lattice, Mycosynth Well, I think. Um, and there's another one. There's like two of the two CMC ones. I don't know what they're called, but you know, th I think this card has potential um, either in the 99 uh, of a deck that cares about a bunch of small things, uh, or even just as the commander of it. Um, other than that, though, you know, might see potential in sideboard cards somewhere. Um, sideboard deck somewhere. I guess in, like, a Rakdos aggro, you could also see this. Because um, that deck has access to things like Butcher. Um, obviously, it has a bunch of the, like, Footlight Fiends and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It might be interesting. Tentative Connection is a 3 and a red sorcery. The spell costs 3 less to cast if you control a creature with Menace. Cool. All right, sure. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. Uh, so this essentially is a um, act of treason that costs one if you have a creature with menace. Now, I've already talked about the potential for some sort of like tier three standard deck uh, that uses a bunch of menace creatures. Um, and I think, I think this card, honestly, is great in a deck like that. Um... Act of Treason is not necessarily a standard card. Um, you can play it in limited. Uh, it's still pretty decent there because you get to take their biggest creature for a turn and it's you know not bad. But the fact that you could just pay one for this means that it might see some decent play, especially if the Menace deck has some overlap with a Sacrifice deck where, you know, before the Sacrifice decks would play things like... Um, goodness, what is that? What is that card called? Um, Claim the Firstborn. And then now, you just get to claim any board. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Um, sorry, I found a piece of food on my desk, and I do not appreciate it being there. So I, I had to get a paper towel. Uh, yes. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. A two-mana instant red spell. Um, Blitz of the Thunder Raptor deals damage to target creature or planeswalker, equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. If that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile instead. This seems to slot very nicely um, into a deck like um, uh, Phoenix's, Arclight Phoenix decks in Historic. Um, I guess technically those are still standard, but you don't really see Arclight Phoenix decks in standard right now. I think my girlfriend is playing with our cat like right outside the door, which is just incredibly rude. How dare she? I'm kidding. Um, but... This, I mean, you know, Phoenix slash Drake decks slash, you know, Kiln Fiend decks. Um, you could even play this in Peasants or whatever they have on Arena, where you can play Uncommons as well. I think it's decent in a deck like that. It Obviously, it can't hit your opponent's face, but being able to have a, a really nicely costed 
and instant speed scaling uh, removal spell for creatures or planeswalkers, that exile as well, I think is not bad, especially considering that deck plays Lava Coil often anyway. And this is an instant speed. Really quickly in a deck like that deals more damage than Lava Coil and can hit planeswalkers. I think this card has a lot of historic play potential. Pat Patagia Tiger. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it. Whatever, it's a four and a white flying three, four cat. Apparently cats in this place just have wings. Sure, that's fine. When it enters the battlefield, target human you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. It is a great limited card. Moving on. This is the first real card I wanted to talk about because I'm still not sure how I feel about this card. Nom, nom, nom. Or I, I believe this, is a, this actual name is In One Bite. As an additional cost to cast the spell, tap an untapped creature you control. Exile target tapped creature. Put a 1-1 counter on the creature tapped to cast the spell. It is a sorcery. I'm immediately going to go straight to the discussion that, for me, matters death and taxes. In, in Historic, don't get me wrong, this thing is not better than Path for Modern. It's very obviously not better than Swords in Legacy. But... How do I think this card is going to play out in my Death and Taxes decks? So one of the things that you might know is that I've had issues, or I've, I've stated that the deck has issues with just dealing with bigger and bigger creatures. Um, you'll notice that in the um, Boros Taxes video that I did yesterday, I don't know how time works, um, the Merfolk deck was a little annoying in that I had to do really tricksy things with uh, against Lords. There are so many issues with this card. So many reasons I think this card is just garbage. Um... And I think I'll just start one at a time. It's a sorcery. The fact that it's a sorcery means that you can't do any kind of tricksy things. The reason why this is one of the least big issues is because death and taxes typically, you know, it's just, a, at least in the historic version that I'm building, it's a bunch of sorcery speed things. Most of the decks are just all creatures. The decks that don't run creatures, they're usually like enchantments or something, right? The sorcery thing, speed thing doesn't matter all that much, but the fact of the matter remains, you can't you can't do any surprise things, you can't respond to something that is super annoying, whatever. It's compounded by the fact that you have to tap and untap creature you control. Now, Death and Taxes, I will say until the end of time, is not an aggro deck. It is a I would it, I would give it maybe tempo. Um, but it's not tempo in the, tip, the typical sense that I usually see tempo, which is usually like essentially Delver decks. Um, I would take tempo, but it really is a wonky ass control deck. And the way it, it's win con isn't the whole like wait until I have a bunch of super advantage and then play like one big threat and kill you with it. It's I'm going to control you by keeping you off your game while essentially pinging you down every turn with some slightly evasive creatures. I need to be able to attack with those, but also I need to be able to, def to defend with those. My goal is to not die until I can kill my opponent. This really makes it so, so super hard to not do that. Um, there are a few creatures that have Vigilance that would be okay with this, but in general, the fact that you gotta tap an un... Obviously it has to be untapped, but the fact that you gotta tap a creature you control sucks ass. Um, I really wish this said, as an additional ca uh, cost, tap a, an untapped creature control or pay one. Even if it's just an additional white, um, but it, tapping a, an untapped creature sucks. Exile target tapped creature. It exiles. That's fantastic. It has to be a tapped creature. I can't get rid of blockers in my way. I can't get rid of um, lords that refuse to enter combat. I can't get rid of creatures that sit there and just have like activated abilities that are going to lose me the game. And I think of all of the, the, the problems I have with this card, that's the biggest one. It has to be a tapped creature. Why though? Like actually why though? <laughs> I understand white is like this whole uh, redemption, or not redemption, but like uh, justice and uh, retaliation. It's not like going to pick the fight. It's going to, uh, you know, uh, it's not going to pick the fight, but it's going to win the fight. Like, I understand that whole ethos. It's bad, though. Like, <laughs> if it weren't for all of the other... Oh, also, you get to put a 1-1 counter on the creature that you tap to cast a spell. That is garbage to me. I don't need that. 
I don't need it. it. For one, it doesn't target your creature, which sure, it gets around Shroud, that doesn't matter. It gets around Protection from White on your own stuff, doesn't matter. Um, technically, this card could have been nicer in Feather if it did target the tapped creature used to cast it, but that wouldn't really make sense parsing. Um, but essentially, the plus one, plus one counter here is here to... My, my, I am willing to bet that this card initially didn't have that. And the, um, the, um, developer, what are they called now? Play design? The play design team who, who go over, like, cards power level were like, yeah, this is way too weak. It doesn't do nearly enough as, as it is right now without that plus one plus counter thing. And then they put a plus one plus one counter and like, ah, yeah, I guess it's fine enough. It's not. It's just not, though. <laughs> it, remove the, the plus one plus one counter thing. Keep it sorcery. Don't care. Keep it so that it, it ha you have to tap a creature. I hate it, but sure. But let us exile any creature, dude. Like, come on. It's, it's, it's bad. It's not good. I hate it. I I, I don't... I, this is the card that I think I'm, I'm... I'm the most happy to be wrong about this card. I want this card to be great for my Death and Taxes decks in Historic. I just don't see it. It, te it seems so bad in every conceivable way. But maybe I'm super wrong, and I want to be wrong here. Floor of the Enemy is a 3-mana instant. Prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponent's control. It's a green It's a green fog. You still get to deal damage, which is cool. Go for Blood is a 2-mana sorcery. That's red. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. It has Cycling 1. That is straightforward and to the point. It has Cycling. Cool. Ah, I just realized his tiger friend has one short tooth. Right? Or am I... Because this... Maybe he doesn't, and it's just like really blended together here. But it looks like he has one short tooth. Hmm. I'll have to check that later. Uh, protocol Division. Evasion Protocol is a two-minute enchantment. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay one. If you do, exile target creature or artifact you control... Then return to the battlefield under your control. Under its owner's control. Excuse me. I'm just gonna go just gonna go here real quick. Just gonna go here real quick. Uh, just ignore those. Just gonna go over here real quick. Astral Drift was the card printed in Modern Horizons as a new version of Astral Slide. Right. It was a it's a more balanced version or whatever. It was, it was the, the updated version of Astral Slide. It's being reprinted in the Commander set. Astral Drift, for those of you who don't know, is a three-man enchantment. Whenever you cycle Astral Drift or another card while Astral Drift is on the battlefield, you may exile target creature. If you do, return that creature to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. This can choose your creatures and your opponent's creatures. It has cycle by itself. It triggers when you cycle it. It costs one more. It's until end of turn. This doesn't have cycling by itself. Can only hit your own creatures. They come back immediately. Oh, and did I mention it gets to cost one less? Why, though? Like, like actually, why? I am so sad. <laughs> It's fine, like, it's actually fine, but fine... <sighs> this card, this card has a lot of interesting play patterns. This card does not. Because this card can do everything that this card can better. The, sure, this this returns under its own control immediately. That might matter in certain circumstances. I, I as a person who plays Flicker Wisp, I really like Long Flicker, um whatever yes it costs one less but you have to pay one every time you want this effect this is free it also it's blue I, blue doesn't need anything give give us give us this <laughs> like i'm so disappointed whatever i don't want to talk about it anymore lightning felix <laughs> uh, uh that is i believe i believe that is portuguese oh Am I smart? Oh, it says EN right there because it's English. This is PT right here because it's Portuguese. Okay, so it is Portuguese. Um, 
This is a red, white, elemental cat. 3-2. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay 2. If you if, if you do... Interesting. Um, it deals 2 damage to target creature, and you gain 2 life. It can't deal 2 damage to target Planeswalker. Why? Like, I, I sure... I guess it's fine that I can't hit my opponent with this, even though Lightning Helix can, Helix can hit any target. Whatever. Um, but why you gotta do me dirty and force me to pay two whole ass mana and only target a creature? Like, come on. You're over here giving blue green the actual the actual nuts of the lion because you ripped it off this one and just gave it to them. This is nonsense. This is an injustice that, justice that I won't stand for. Uh, JK, this card is probably decent. Uh, it's a 2-mana 3-2 that just has an extra ability tacked to it. It is, like, by definition, pretty decent. <laughs> I just wanted to be a snippy bitch. <laughs> C-Dasher Octopus. What the fuck is this? 3-mana for a 2-2 two -two Octopus. Mutate. 2. Flash. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. This is a good card for flash decks. It makes me sad, and it makes me sad. You can flash at mutate speed. The mutate is two mana, which is pretty decent. Uh, this card, I expect to see play. There's also a lot of green in this art, and orange. That one, yeah, that one kind of looks like what I expected it to. This, this, see, this is the thing I was like talking about, like, um. There's a lot of red here, but it's not... I feel like it's not over... Oversaturated there. Same with this. There's, you know, there's greens, but it's not too much. And even this, you know... They could have made this a different color. Um, but I don't think it matters. His armor is a little muted from what we've seen, I think. But... Other than this... Like, the art really has been... Um, including different colors like this is a blue a blue black spell um there's purple here which is kind of one of the stand-ins for black uh there's obviously a lot of blue here but there's plenty of brown here as well i i really appreciate that um anyway flashy rogue is a demir demir human rogue tutu with flash spells you cast with flash cost one less to cast and can't be countered If you play this card on turn two, because the mana in standard right now is Dece, on turn three, you can play Night, Night Pack Ambusher. But why? Why are they giving Flash more tools? I'm so upset. I hate Flash with a passion. So I'm pretty sure standard's not going to be nice for me for a while still. Lore Dracus, this is the actual card art, which, for what it's worth, looks fucking dope. It's a lizard beast. I'm kind of upset that it's not a lizard snake beast, just because that looks Cobra AF. Um, but, sure, whatever. It is a 1 blue red for a 2-3. Uh, it has mutate, is it, is it. Whenever this creature mutates, return target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard to your hand. It's another cool instant sorcery card in, is it? It has okay stats. Maybe it's he's playing Historic Drakes. Maybe. Um, maybe he's playing some sort of interesting standard Drakes style deck. Who knows? I like it. It has cool art. Okay, this one, this one admittedly is pretty, pretty is it looking. This man's looks un uncanny valley AF. He does not look like he fits here. This thing, sure. This thing, it looks a little, it looks a little like, like it shouldn't be there. Like someone photoshopped it in. Like it doesn't look bad. It just looks wrong. He, I think it's because he looks too normal. He looks like too normal of a person. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Anyway, it's a two mana sorcery. Create a 1-1 one, one red dinosaur creature token with haste and a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. It's, it's a different form of dragon fodder where one of the goblins gets haste. Cool. Yeah, no, seems seems fine. Capture Sphere. Oh, no! See, he actually looks a little better here. Like, from the front and this this weird 
uh, the, the sad facial expression, he looks less out of place. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a 4-mana flash enchant creature. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature is an untap uh, during its controller's next uh, during its controller's next tap tap. Oh, this is a reprint, man! I didn't know that. This isn't a reprint. Cathartic reunion is a reprint, but I wanted to show all these. And then he gets he gets his his buddy Dino buddy back. Uh, Cathartic reunion is a reprint. I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> this this right here. One of the other reasons I really want I'm gonna get back. Um, Frond, Frondland Felidar is a two green white cat beast, three five vigilance. Creatures you control with vigilance have pay one, tap target creature. This has a fat ass, so it can be played in things like um, uh, Arcades Sabbath. This has vigilance by itself, so it can attack in and use its ability. It's a, as I said, fat ass, which means. You don't really have to worry too much about this creature dying. And it's a cat. Man. I I wonder how how many how many cool cats are there? Let's see, um, at most of these colors, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do we're gonna do cat. There we go, cat. Then we're gonna go down here and then we're gonna do uh, enter a block name. We're gonna go ahead and choose Omni Cat Block. We're gonna search with these. Let's see, let's see some of the some of the cool cats here. Uh, it's a cool cat. It's a pretty decent fucking cat. This is a really cool fucking cat right here. Uh, that's a cat. That's a cat. Don't know if you knew that that was a cool-ass cat. Give us cat backs. Give us the cats back. Wait, there's a cat that I'm missing here. Was it from Colonage Block? Okay, D-H. It's a K-H-D. Is it K-L-D? Oh, it's KLD. I feel stupid. Nope. There's a there's a there's a cat that I'm thinking of that I I just I'm just stupid. It's fine. Who cares? A lot of cool cats. I want cats back. Even though I'm a dog person. Whatever. Sanctuary Lockdown is a two and a white enchantment human creature. Humans you control. I don't know why I said creatures. Get plus one plus one. Okay. It's a it's a enchantment. What the fuck is that thing called? A crusade. It's a crusade for humans. Pay two. Tap two. Untap humans you control. Tap target creature and opponent controls. That does the doesn't seem very good. That just doesn't seem very good. That just doesn't seem very good. I've lost my fucking mind. Uh, nah, but for real, um, this is a limited card. If I've ever seen one. Yeah, because you're gonna be like making a bunch of human tokens. You make your human tokens a little bit bigger, and then like it once you have like too many small human tokens, and your opponent has some big stuff, because there's plenty of big stuff in the set. You just tap tap down a creature like you could tap down a mutated creature yeah i think this is just like solid um limited card and that's it i don't expect to see it anywhere else <laughs> <laughs> exuberant wolf bear is a four mana four four wolf bear it just looks like a chunky ass wolf but is has bear claws it's, it's a wolf bear whenever it attacks you may change the base power and toughness of target human you control to exuberant wolf bears power and toughness until end of turn. Notably, this is not its base power and toughness. So, if you, you know, mutate your wolf bear to be a bit larger, um, or you enchant it with something to be a bit larger, etc., etc., you can then make that human to be quite large. I doubt there's going to be like a Bonders deck, um, but this is another one of those kind of postcards for um, limited. Cub Warden. This is the real art for it. And the real art looks fucking real if I do, uh, do say so myself. It's a 4 mana, 3 5 cat. Again, this one has lifelink, uh, and it also has mutate. It's uh, 2 white white. Whenever this creature mutates, create 2 1 1 white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Man, that seems very sim. Nope. Nope. <laughs> that seems very similar. <laughs> no, um. The, the card is super cool. Um, I don't... Th at this point, honestly, there might be sufficient... No, I, I think there are sufficient uh, white-green cards in standard that you could make not only a cat deck, but a workable cat deck. Because you have... Um, you have a Janny, other a Janny, a Janny's Pride Mate, um, Cub Warden, the other 
the the vigilance cat and they have just other other cats in the set that i'm not thinking about because i'm garbage I, I i think that you can make a cat deck um i'm gonna go and make a cat deck at some point avenging hunt bonder is a five mana this we have finally gotten back to the uh commander cards avenging hunt bonder is a five mana three three with double strike it's a human warrior whenever it attacks put a double strike counter on another target attacking creature make all your dudes even bigger <laughs> um thinking about this in a commander context it feels a little weak because for five mana i just worry that the three toughness is going to do it in pretty often um in something like i don't know a brawl context i think it's fine but that would be in a brawl context and this is a commander card Ooh. vitality hunter is a four mana three four mono white nightmare Excuse me, what? Um, it has lifelink. This is a nightmare. Um, it's monstrous. It has monstrosity. Uh, X, white, white. When Vitality Hunter becomes monstrous, put a lifelink counter on each of up to X target creatures. What? This is a nightmare. Which, when it deals damage, it gains you life. And when it gets freaky and monstrous... It allows more of your creatures to help you gain life. Checks out. No, that makes sense. <laughs> this is this is an unset. In disguise. This whole thing. Ikoria plus commander. Surly Badger Sword is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three Badger Dinosaur. <laughs> Whenever you discard a creature card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Surly Badger Sword. Whenever you discard a land card, create a treasure token. When you go discard a non-creature, non-land card, certainly Badger Sword fights up to one target creature you don't control. This card is awesome. It's awesome in wheel decks, because you you all of the discards are going to happen at once. You get to choose the order in which these triggers resolve. Obviously, you resolve the uh, creature part. Then you resolve the fact that you're going to beat the crap out of a bunch of creatures. If you can give this indestructible somehow, like, I don't know, with uh, indestructible counters, for example, then you just get to punch the out of things with a Badger who doesn't care. Uh, I absolutely love this card. Um, discard a creature card. You have to be the one discarding cards. So it goes it goes really nicely in a cycling deck, in a madness deck, uh, in a wheels deck. So things like Necrostar might actually like this. Uh, I, I like the design of this card. That, that That's about it. Cryptic Trilobite <laughs> is an XX colorless 0, zero Trilobite. It enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So if you pay 2, you get a 1-1. One, one. If you pay 3... You get a 1-1. One, one. Why did you pay 3? That's so stupid. You actually can't play 3. It's fine. If you pay 4, you get a 2-2. Two, two, whatever, etc., etc. Remove a 1-1 one, one counter from Cryptic Trilobite. Add Colorless Colorless. Spend this mana only to activate abilities. Generic Tap. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Cryptic Trilobite. This card is... Similar to cards like Hangerback Walker. Technically, it's similar to Walking Ballista as well. But I think Ballista, you know, Ballista's like up here... Hangerback Walker's like here. Trilobite's like so, somewhere in this area, right? It's not bad. Um, it's actually, in my opinion, a pretty decent. Um, essentially, right? You can remove a counter from it and then immediately use one of that counters, one of those, uh, one of those uh, mana to tap it, put a counter back, right? And then you have that additional call this mana. Now, if you have a free way to untap this, then you have infinite mana. Infinite colorless mana. If you have um, something that cares about creatures becoming tapped, and you have something that untaps something for one mana, infinite, infinite tap triggers. Um, there's there's some very much very big Johnny potential here. But I don't know it because I'm not a good Johnny. <laughs> Slippery Bog Binder. This is hilarious. Because this is um Slippery Boggle. Excuse me, this is a reference to Slippery Boggle, and the same person who did that the, the updated art of Slippery Boggle did this art, which is just fantastic. And this girl is just like wearing a bunch of blue nonsense and like gross mucusy looking stuff. Next to this dude who like has his his hand on her shoulder, and like he just has like an ugh, like a grossly human face. 
and I don't like it. But it's a 4 mana 3 3 human druid with flash and hexproof. Like a boggle does. When it enters the battlefield, put a hexproof counter on target creature, then move any number of counters from among creatures you control onto that creature. I love it. It's, it's funny, it's cool. Uh, it has flash, but like, I don't care because it's a meme. <laughs> um, it's also probably pretty decent. Fierce Guardianship is the last of the um, commander cards. It is a three minute instant. If you control your commander, or sh sorry, if you control a commander, you may cast the spell without paying its cost. Counter target non-creature spell. Depending on your group, this could be amazing or it could be meh, right? The thing is, you're almost always going to have something that you're going to want to counter that isn't a creature, right? Even my Myel deck, which is half... It's 100... Okay, it's not actually half creatures. But still, you know, it's like 35 creatures. So 35% creatures, essentially. Um, even in that deck, I have a lot of enchantments and a lot of sorceries. And technically a decent number of artifacts, right? You just get to be like, all right, I'll have a counter spell for it. Obviously, this costs three, which is more than negate, but it can cost zero, which is less than negate. <laughs> um, I think this card is good. Yep. Good. That's about it. I'd like to thank my lovely patrons, especially Zen, for continued support. If you'd like to join them and support the show, you'll find links to that down in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, go and tap that like button, add a subscription to your mana pool, because it comes in the comment section down below. Pass the turn and the vid to some of your friends. And of, yeah, and of course, until next time, I'll be one.